Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves in Iceland, where you can climb volcanoes, count sheep, and eat delicious tomatoes. Thanks to geothermal energy, Iceland is a vegetable paradise. You'll be vegetable farmers, building a livelihood in beautiful Iceland. Rakeholt is a worker placement game for 1 to 4 players, plays in 30 to 60 minutes, is for ages 12 and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Rake Colt is a worker placement strategy game for one to four players where you're trying to move your manager through tables along this tourism track. And you'll be placing workers which blocks other people to take specific actions. You'll be gathering vegetables of different types. You'll be gaining greenhouses of different sizes and telling you which vegetables you might be able to seed there. And when you seed one, it actually grows from the supply and gives you many of that vegetable type, which then you'll be harvesting later to spend. And you'll be spending a certain amount of vegetables to be able to move through different tables and move up this different tourism track. But the further you get, the more vegetables you'll have to spend. There's plenty of action spots to choose from, and there's different service cards that will give you different abilities, and you can play with different sets each game for great replayability. And there's also a solo variant of the game and a story mode that has certain scenarios with different types of rules, goals, and new event cards. I'm going to go over how to set up the game for two to four players. At the end of this video, I'll go over how to set up and play for the solo game. If you're playing solo, still watch the whole game because many of the rules are the same. Now you're going to put the board in the middle of the table. And you're going to use the side of the board for the amount of players you're playing. In the bottom left hand side of that board, you'll see a player count. In this case, if you're playing with two players, you'll use the one that says one or two players. And with that two players at the top of the board, you're going to place this covering tile with this two player side up at the top of the board just like that. If you're playing with three or four players, you'll flip the board over to the side that has three or four players on the bottom left-hand side of the board. Now, if you're playing with three players, you'll take that same covering tile that you used for one or two players, you'll flip that over so it has the three player side, and you're gonna place it on the top row of the actions, just below this sort of round counter section of the board. And if you're playing with four players, you do not need to use this covered tile at all. You just take it out and put it in the box. Next, you're going to find these greenhouse cards, and you're going to separate them out into different stacks. Each stack has the corresponding number of parcels on it. So all this stack has all threes, all fours, five, sixes, and there's a whole stack with question marks. Now for each of those stacks, the cards will show which ones you use for specific player counts, like one or more players, two or more players, three or more players, or all four players. So you'll take out the cards if you're playing with less than four players. For example, if you're only playing with three, for all of these stacks, for, with the numbers on them, you would take out the ones with four and you would just put these back in the box. You wouldn't need them. So for each of these stacks, go through and make sure you're using only the ones for your specific player count. Then for the stack with the question marks, you'll find one with a red arrow on it like this. Leave this one aside. You'll take the rest of these cards, you'll shuffle them up, and then you're going to place this one with the red arrow right on top. Now you'll be placing these stacks above the top of the board where everyone can see them. Now within each stack, you don't have to worry about shuffling each stack because all the cards in the stack are the same. So you can flip those over face up just like this. And those numbers you saw on the other side is the number of parcels. So it says three, four, five, and six. And all the cards within the stack are the same. Make sure you do not flip over the question mark. These ones will be set face down again with that red arrow card on the top. This pile is known as the random greenhouse pile. Next, you're going to locate all of the service cards. Now, these have letters on the bottom of them. Now, the back side of them look like this, and the other side looks like this. Now, you'll want to put them in like stacks. So this stack has all A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's. Now, for your first game, you're going to find the stack of A, and these are the ones that you'll use. In subsequent games, you can choose which single stack you'll use. Keep in mind, if you do use the E, it's only able to be used in a two-player game. So, since it's your first game, you're going to be playing with that A stack. You'll shuffle those cards up, 
and lay the first five on the side of the board just like this, and the extra card that you did not use, because there are six of them, will get removed and be put back in the box. Next, you're going to locate the game round tiles. Put them face up so you can see the round numbers. You're going to remove the number eight tile, put it back in the box. This is not used in the basic game. Then you're going to place them in ascending order from top down, meaning you're gonna put the tile seven on the bottom, six on top of that, five, four, three, two, one. So as it goes down, it counts down through the round numbers. Then you're going to place those on the round counter on the board, just like that. Then you're gonna get the resources ready. You will need to punch out and assemble these little crates. Each of them have a specific vegetable on them. And once it's assembled, you'll simply put in the wooden tokens that match that vegetable type and place these over near the side of the board where everyone can reach them. Now near where those resources are kept, you can also place the corresponding tiles of that vegetable. These essentially are just each or three of that corresponding vegetable. So at any point in time, you can trade three resources and take one of these counters to just help with the resource management of the game. Now that you have those resources set up, to the one side of those services cards, the A cards that you set up earlier, you're going to stack one mushroom, one lettuce, and one tomato. And it's going to go in this order. One mushroom's on the bottom, then you're going to put a lettuce on top of that, and then you're going to put a tomato on top of that, just like that. Then each player is going to select a color to play, and from that color, they're going to take their three workers, the color-specific round order player aid card, and this bottle, which essentially is your manager. Any colors not used can be placed back in the box. Then, starting with the player who most recently purchased tomatoes, they're going to place their manager on the bottom left-hand side of the board at the beginning of what's this called the tourism track, which essentially is a score track, but it's called the tourism track. So let's say the yellow player was the most recent to buy tomatoes, and then, clockwise from them, they would go behind them. This yellow player, who's the first, would take this first player card and place it in front of them. You'll see a deck of cards that says stop on it, says please don't open. This you can put back in the box, you won't need it for the main game. The object of the game is to be the one that has moved your manager furthest along this tourism track that wraps around the board, and to do that you're going to be spending a specific amount of vegetables to be moving through different tables. And the game is played over multiple rounds. As we saw earlier setting this up, the main game goes for seven rounds long. And each of those rounds is going to go through four different phases, work time, harvest time, tourism time, and homecoming time. Let's talk about each of these phases. Work time is when all players will be placing workers on the board and taking actions. Starting with the player who has that start player card, they're going to begin placing one of their three workers onto the board, and then players will be going in a clockwise motion. Now when placing a worker, it doesn't matter which one of yours you place, none of them do anything different, they're just three general workers. When you place them, you must place them on a spot that does not already have a worker, because there can never be more than one worker, and when you do so, you take the action immediately. Some actions will have you do one of two things, like take two mushrooms or one carrot, and there's symbology and language here. Some of them will have you do possibly two things like harvest one time and take one lettuce on one cauliflower. Let's first talk about this. So take two mushrooms or one carrot. You would simply do this and take either one of those from the resources and put it in front of you. And again, each player will place one worker. It will go to the next player clockwise. This will continue until all three uh, workers have been placed by all players. Now, when taking a space that has more than one action, like this one, you must perform as many of the actions as possible, but you have to be able to perform at least one of those actions. And you cannot skip voluntarily any of the actions. Now, these action spaces are divided into four columns. From left to right, we have property actions, field actions, market actions, and town hall actions. Now, some spaces have these little black flags on them, and in any single column, you can never have a worker on more than one of these black flag spaces in that column. So, for example, if I already had a worker here with this one in the black flag, I could not put it on any other black flag space in that column. However, I could put it in another column with a black flag, as long as I don't already have one on another black flag space in that column. I'm not going to go over every spot, but I am going to cover some of the main concepts that these different spaces have. Sometimes you'll be taking a greenhouse, and sometimes you'll be taking any one of those greenhouses that you want face up. Sometimes it will tell you to take a greenhouse with a specific amount of parcels, like three or four. And keep in mind that the greenhouses, the parcels are the number of planting spots that are on there, so this is a four parcel greenhouse. 
And keep in mind, if you're taking a random greenhouse, you're taking it from the top of the stack of what card is there with the question marks on that greenhouse that you set up earlier. Now, if you ever have to discard a greenhouse, you take all the goods on this, put it back in the supply, and you'll place this back into the corresponding pile of greenhouses where other players can then grab this. Some spots talk about seeding, like this says, take one tomato and seed one time. Well, we would simply just take one tomato from the supply and put it in our stock, which is just in front of us, and then we'll seed. Let's talk about that. Now, when seeding, you can only seed a greenhouse that is completely empty, meaning there's no vegetables in any of the parcels, like this one is completely empty. Then, this shows you what types of vegetables you can possibly seed this greenhouse with. Well, we just picked up a tomato, and we have a tomato here, so we could seed with that. So, you can take a vegetable of any of these types from your stock, which is in front of you that you've already gotten, and you'll place that into one of the parcels. Then, from the supply, not your stock, you will fill up the rest of the parcels with that vegetable. So this one came from my stock, which I actually had obtained earlier, and the rest of these will come from the supply, not from me. Now, some spaces say seed at least. Like in this case, seed at least two times. So in order to go here, you'd need to be able to seed at least two times, but you could seed as many times as you like. Keeping in mind when you seed, it has to be in an empty greenhouse. Now, some spots on the board allow you to harvest. This is harvest up to two times. Now, generally, when harvesting, you take one good from one of your greenhouses and move it to your stock. In this case, it said we could har harvest up to two. So we can harvest one of these tomatoes, you put it into your stock in front of you, and anytime you harvest, generally, you have to harvest from different greenhouses. So it said we could harvest up to two, so we did this for this greenhouse, and we could harvest one off of that. That's harvesting twice. However, keep in mind, some spots might uh, break that rule by saying harvesting two times from the same greenhouse, but by default, whenever you harvest, you have to do it from different greenhouses. Some spots allow you to take a service card. And remember, those are the cards, the stack A of cards that we set up on the side of the board. You can take any one of these that are available and put it in front of you. And these cards just give you abilities that are self-explanatory, like whenever you seed at least one time, you may harvest one time. And sometimes you might be able to choose a service card owned by a neighbor and you now share that card. And by neighbor, it means somebody sitting next to you to your left or your right. So if I had gotten this and a player to my left or my right went to that spot and they wanted to share this, they would take this card and put it in between the both of us. This means for the rest of the game, this card, we can both use it and no one else can share or take that card from us. Now, if you remember, at the beginning of the game, we placed a mushroom, then a lettuce, then a tomato at one of the ends of the service cards. If when you get down to the last of the three cards, when somebody takes one of these, they'll take the top vegetable, in this case a tomato. When either one of these is taken from someone, that player would take a lettuce, and when the last one is taken, that player would get the mushroom. And even though most of the service cards are quite self-explanatory, if you have certain questions about specific ones, you can turn to page 10 in the rulebook for those specifics. Some spaces will allow you to immediately advance your manager a certain amount of tables. And that would be taking where your manager is and moving it one, two, or however many uh, uh, tables it tells you to move it forward. And keep in mind that this work time phase continues until all players have placed all three of their workers. And keep in mind, again, you're taking the actions immediately when you place them. Then you'll move on to phase two, which is harvest time. Now, during harvest time, each player harvests one vegetable from each of their greenhouses, putting it in their stock. Now keep in mind that some effects from service cards might have it so that there's different goods on a single greenhouse. And in that case, the player can decide which single good that they would harvest. Then you'd move on to the tourism time phase. Now I've spun the board sideways just to be able to see this tourism track a little bit easier. And keep in mind, this essentially is the score track and you're trying to move your manager and be the furthest along when the game ends to win. Now, everyone will take a turn, one at a time, and you'll go not in turn order, but in the order of who's furthest ahead on the track, and then the next furthest ahead, and so on and so forth. So in this case, at the beginning, it's gonna be yellow, then pink, then black, then blue, but they're gonna be going in this way. Now, there can be multiple players on a table like this, and it's always the player who's furthest on that table will be the one to go before the other. Now, when it's your turn, for example, the yellow player, they can discard as many goods as they want to move as many tables as they want. So for example, this one, you can't quite see it, says one tomato, it also shows just one tomato on this. This means that this player would need to discard a tomato from their stock into the supply in order to move here. 
Now here, they would have to discard this good in order to move here, and this good for here, and so on and so forth. Now when moving up this tourism track, let's just say there were multiple people here. When you move to a spot, if you discarded one of these uh, goods, you actually move to that same table as the others, but you go in front of all the others. Now also, in addition to discarding goods to move, you must take one bonus action. And that bonus action is instead of spending a good, you actually gain the good showed. So if you spend a bonus here, you would move to this table, but instead of spending one carrot, you would gain one carrot. But let's just say we spent one carrot and went here. Let's say we wanted to use our bonus here instead. You only get one bonus during this phase and you have to use it. You could go here and instead of spending the two, if this was where you used your bonus, you would actually gain two tomatoes and you can use those goods that you get from bonuses to pay for things even during this specific phase. And keep in mind, you can use that bonus at any time before or after moving any amount of times. Now in the rare case that somebody gets all the way past the end of the tourism track, they would cycle around and go here, but you would add six to each of these numbers. So here you would need to discard seven, for example. After all players have taken their entire turn in the tourism phase, we then move to the homecoming time. During this phase, players retrieve all of their workers off the board, and then they're going to take this top tile and flip it over like this, and now you know what round you're on. Then the player that has the uh, first player card will pass it clockwise to the next player. You will continue through the different rounds, those four phases per round, until you finish the last round of the game. At that point, whoever's furthest around the tourism track is the winner. If it's tied, whoever uh, has gotten all the way to the front of that table, which essentially is the person that got there last, would be the winner. Now when playing the solo game, you'll follow the rules for a two-player game with the following setup and game changes. Again, making sure that you're using the sides that say one player. For the numbered parceled greenhouses, you'll only be using the cards that say one plus players. For the random greenhouses, you'll set them up as normal. You'll actually select three workers from two different colors, but you'll only take one manager, take it of either color. You'll then take two workers from a color that you did not select as yours, and you'll basically place them on these two flagged spots on the board. This is the property a column, and it's the two flag spots. These essentially stay here the whole game. They're blocked. You cannot go there the entire game. From the service cards that you've selected, remember the letter that you're using, you'll use only three cards randomly instead of five, but you'll still set up the vegetables next to them as normal, the mushroom, then the lettuce, and the tomato. So even when you take your first card, you'll be taking a tomato, second card, lettuce, last card, mushroom. And when setting up the rounds, you'll only use up to five rounds in this solo game. So you can get rid of anything six or more. Now, at the beginning of each round, you'll start the work time phase, and you'll take one tomato from the supply, and you'll take a random greenhouse. And this does not take up any actions. Now, you'll be alternating in the different rounds. Let's say the first round, you've used your three blue workers that you selected. Now, remember, you selected workers from two colors. These will stay on the board so that the next round, so on the even rounds, you'll use the other ones and do the actions. So essentially, the ones that you've done the previous round won't be able to be used. They're essentially blocking your spaces. And then, so after this round, you'll be getting these back. And now the, the pink ones that you used will block spaces for the next round. And retrieving those workers from the previous round happens during that last phase of the round, the homecoming time. Now the goal in this solo game is to reach the tomato table with five dishes, like this one. Now, you can beat your high score by advancing even further, and you can measure your success by counting how many goods you had of those represented by the next table. And you can convert this into points if you really want to. Let's say you actually got up to here, and, um, you have two of these goods. So this is where you needed to get to win the game. And each one of these is 10 points. So this would be 10 points, that'd be 20 points. And if you had two goods here, that would be two more points. So if you got here and had two of these goods, you'd have 22 points. So you can keep score that way as well. And you can also play your variant where once per game, you can go to a blocked spot, but you gotta decide when's the right time to do that. Now there's also a story mode where you'll use the deck that we had you set aside that said stop in the setup of the main game. Now you can play this with any player count. Now these cards contain five scenario cards, 13 event cards, and 16 service cards. And by the way, these new service cards can also be used in the main game without playing in the story mode. You could just add them to the game and use them if desired. 
Now when setting up the game, you'll take the scenario card. It's best to do them in order. You don't have to, you can play any one, but we recommend playing them in order. This will tell you the number of rounds, additional rules, and the goals in the game. And additionally, you'll shuffle these 13 event cards and put them near the board. Now at the beginning of the work time phase, which is the first one of each round, one of these event cards will just get flipped up and it will change the game for that round. And after you perform this, it can be discarded. And that's it. Just follow the chapter and the scenario of the number of rounds and the goals of the game. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Raycult and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, because not only will I be notified, but so will Renegade Game Studios.